we are going to bring you 21 facts about Down Syndrome. <laughs> so in honor of Down Syndrome Awareness Month, we thought we would share some facts about Down Syndrome. But before we get into it, subscribe to the channel, ring those post notifications, and give this video a big thumbs up! Thumbs up. Let's get into it! <laughs> when our daughter was born, she surprised us with her Down Syndrome diagnosis. And at that time, we had no idea what our lives would look like. But we quickly discovered extra needs bring extra joy. Through the good times and the challenges. And the adventure and the routine. We're learning to live this life to the fullest. With, with a, a little, little extra. extra. occurs when there are three copies of the 21st chromosome. So typically people only have two copies of each chromosome, one from their mom and one from their dad. But people with Down syndrome have one extra copy of the 21st chromosome. That's why it's also called trisomy 21. That's the scientific name for Down syndrome. There are three types of Down syndrome, trisomy 21, mosaic, and translocation. Mosaic is when you have a partial copy of the 21st chromosome, and translocation means a chromosome has broken off and attached itself to another one. And translocation is the only one with any sort of genetic link. Researchers have found no environmental factors that cause Down syndrome. Down syndrome occurs in all races and economic levels. One of the only links to Down syndrome that's been discovered is maternal age. So the chance of having a child with Down syndrome does increase the older a mother gets. However, 80% of babies with Down syndrome are born to mothers under 35. I was 30 when I had Estelle. We had about a one in a thousand chance of having a baby with Down syndrome. Down syndrome is the most common chromosomal condition. There are over 400,000 people living in the United States with Down syndrome. Down syndrome was named after the doctor first classified this condition, John Langdon Down. Down is not a descriptive term. It has nothing to do with someone's personality or character traits. Sometimes people with Down syndrome have a sandal gap. That's a big space between your toes. Another typical characteristic of people with Down syndrome is smaller stature. So the average height for a typical male with Down syndrome is about 5'2", and for females, it's only about four and a half feet. So I'm pretty sure Estelle's probably gonna be our only kid who's shorter than I am. People with Down syndrome can have almond-shaped eyes, just like Estelle. Another attribute that people with Down syndrome might have is a single palmar crease. It's one line that goes across the palm. We've heard that this is caused while in utero, the baby who has hypotonia is not able to clench their fist tight enough to create two lines, and there's only one. And Estelle has them on both hands. Some babies we've seen have them only on one hand, and they have the regular lines on the other hand. So it's just another interesting attribute that people with Down syndrome might have. People with Down syndrome often have something called hypotonia, which is also known as low muscle tone. It doesn't mean that they have weak muscles, it means that their muscles are in a more relaxed state. So it's been explained to us that it has more to do with the connection between the mind and the muscle. And it's also why people with Down syndrome tend to have some motor delays, like learning how to walk or talk or even feeding issues. It's also why Estelle is crazy flexible. People with Down syndrome have an increased risk for certain medical conditions. Some of the common ones can be heart disease, respiratory problems, Alzheimer's, childhood leukemia, and thyroid conditions. The good news is most of these conditions are treatable. One in two babies with Down syndrome are born with a heart defect, but with proper medical treatment, it can be corrected and they can go on to live a very healthy life. The life expectancy for someone with Down syndrome has increased dramatically in the past few decades. It went from being 25 years old in the 80s to now being 60 and over. So this is mainly because people started treating individuals with Down syndrome like humans. Go figure. All people with Down syndrome have some level of cognitive delay, but it's typically very mild to moderate. But it's certainly not indicative of a person's overall ability and desire to learn. Down syndrome is not a spectrum condition. You either have it or you don't. People with Down syndrome can go to school, work, and contribute to society just like everyone else. 
Researchers continue to make great strides in understanding Down syndrome. We're not looking for a cure, but research really helps to identify ways in which people with Down syndrome can learn. It helps to understand the medical issues that they might be more at risk for so that people with Down syndrome can get better preventative care and live a healthier, happier, more fulfilling life. When people with Down syndrome have quality education, good health care, a stimulating home environment, and good support from friends and family and the community around them, they really are able to live their lives to their full potential and lead a very fulfilling life. Thanks for watching, guys. We yeah. hope you guys learned something new. We invite you to continue to join us for Down Syndrome Awareness Month, where we're going to bring you more special content. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, ring the post notifications so that you can catch all of our videos, and of course, give this video a big thumbs, thumps up. up. See you guys in the next video. Bye, Bye guys. Do you have Down syndrome? Yeah. Does baby Emma have Down syndrome? Yeah. And Emma. Baby Pearl has Down syndrome? Yeah. And Emma, this one. Dolly? Dolly. Emma. Dolly has Down syndrome too? Yeah. Oh, always Emma. Woody has Down syndrome? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.